Now a reminder of that old adage, there is no such thing as a free lunch. CNN has new reporting that the Trump campaign is getting a boost from multiple people the former president pardoned before leaving the White House. CNN's Steve Contorno is following this story. Steve, what have you learned? Well, Dana, earlier this week we found out that Paul Manafort is in line for a potential role at the Republican National Convention. He, of course, is Trump's former campaign manager who served prison time for tax evasion and who Trump pardoned in his final days in office. Well, it turns out uh, Manafort is not alone. There are more than a dozen individuals whose sentences uh, Trump commuted or who Trump pardoned who are now somehow engaged in helping Trump get back to the White House. This list includes some of his closest long-term advisors, individuals like Roger Stone, uh, Steve Bannon, Michael Flynn, his former national security advisor. All these individuals continue to go around the country, not in a paid role for the campaign, but in an informal role, sort of uh, boosting the former president uh, and certainly selling some of the election lies around the 2020 election. And then you have other individuals who are helping raise money for the campaign or donating to the political committees uh, that are supporting him. That includes Charles Kushner. He is, the, of course, the father of his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Uh, Charles Kushner made a $1 million contribution to MAGA Inc. That is one of the uh, super PACs supporting Trump's campaign, one of the largest single donations uh, to that super PAC. And then you have individuals who are more uh, celebrities and they're using their, their large following support Trump. That includes uh, Kodak Black, the rapper whose Trump sentence uh, commuted, uh, or Trump commuted his sentence uh, and then there's one other individual I want to mention, that's John Tate. He is someone uh, who is a po longtime political operative. He worked on the Ron Paul campaign, was later convicted of bribery in, uh, or convicted in a bribery scheme related to his work on that campaign. He is now advising Trump's campaign as a consultant, and he has made more than $70,000 in that role so far. Incredible reporting. Of course, you can see more of it on CNN.com. Uh, and Steve, before I let you go, you spoke to a clemency expert who called this situation a perfect storm. Meaning what? Well, there's just so many highly unusual circumstances here. You have the fact that we have this uh, former president who has been nominated by his party to run for his former job. That itself uh, is remarkable. But you also have the way that Trump treated the pardoning process that was ahistorical as well. There are all these people who were celebrities and, and former advisors, supporters, donors, people close to his political operation and his administration who he pardoned, most of them in their final days. And there's also this sort of interesting dynamic I want to mention as well, where you have these individuals who may very well be spending this election cycle serving a federal sentence they are now free because of Trump, and they are helping Trump get back to the White House, Dana. Steve, wow. Again, terrific reporting. Thank you so much. Gloria, um, you spent a lot of time <laughs> in the four years of the Trump White yeah. House uh, covering a lot of the, the back and forth with some of these individuals who Steve is reporting. Uh, Paul Manafort. Are back in the mix. Yeah. Well, Paul Manafort, I mean, I remember he ran the convention yeah. for, for Donald Trump. It was very important. And then it was discovered that he was talking to the Russians, right? Giving them campaign information, and poll then he got information. A pardon. And then, of course, he got a pardon. Look, this is a nice way to say thank you uh, for, for a lot of these people. I mean, what more could Donald Trump have done for them mm -hmm. than, than pardon them and get them out of jail? And I think uh, Paul Manafort would jump at the chance to become relevant again in this way. Yeah. And then the question is, if he does win, how active will people like that be in the administration of Donald Trump. Be that's very that's, that's yeah. getting way out, uh, way out ahead of ourselves. But we do want to switch gears to something that Trump is doing right now, which is he's scrambling. He only has four days left to find nearly half a billion dollars to post bond in his civil fraud case. If not, the state of New York could begin seizing his assets. Trump is fundraising off of that possibility, sending a text to supporters yesterday reading, keep your filthy hands off Trump Tower. Uh, so what he is doing, and I just want to be clear, he's not asking his supporters to pay his bond. He's asking his supporters to give money to his campaign, which also contributes to legal fees. Exactly. And you can double dip in a sense because, I mean, there is a limit for, con for, con for contributing to a, a political campaign. There's not 
the same limit for a legal defense fund. And, and if but, I may, he's also, I mean, this is what he does. And right. everybody in politics does this now. He's trying to rile up his potential right. donors sure. to get angry to send money. And one thing that is clear that we've seen really for now more than a year is whenever he is in legal trouble, it has helped him uh, politically. Yes. So imagine this scenario. Um, I heard uh, one of our legal experts uh, saying on our air this morning that, uh, you know, the visual of uh, Trump Tower being padlocked or something and, you know, they're seizing property. Imagine how that would help the former president politically. Imagine how those images would sort of build onto this. So even though legally and financially it's not good for him, we do not necessarily know that politically this is not good for him in the moment. It's just one more a part of what a lot of voters see as a pylon effect for him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this drumbeat to the uh, Monday deadline also keeps Trump consuming all the oxygen in this race. Yeah, that's right. And that is such an important note of caution because every single time, I can't think of one example right yeah, now, I'm sure there not. is, where sort of the conventional thinking in a conventional campaign about a conventional politician was, From the mud oh, this is going to hurt other things. Yeah, and boom, right. boom, boom, yeah. and it's, uh, I mean, going even back to when he would, would, was trashing John McCain, didn't hurt him. Uh, Catherine Rempel wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post about this, saying he, meaning Trump, treats every bill, every signed contract as merely an opening offer. Imagine you lend Trump a few million dollars and then he gets elected president again. It would become virtually impossible to collect. If you did try to collect, Trump would likely have a few qualms about sticking the Justice or Treasury Department on you. This is the this is the difficult and delicate thing for the White House and for the Biden campaign, right? Because they can't, we just played that ad. They responded very quickly to COVID. They're staying very far away from all of this because they don't want to play into the narrative of big bad government mm -hmm. and the government's getting involved and they're the, the you know the DOJ is is working for Biden. So all of that makes this very sensitive for the White House and for the Biden campaign to weigh in on, which even though the narrative exists and is out there, and the former president uses it to his advantage and uses it to his advantage. I mean, I think the, the immediately the mugshot came to mind mm -hmm. when uh, with all of this that's going on with the bond because it was something he was using to his political advantage. And then there is the question we talked a, a little bit about on the show yesterday with uh, Bill Cohan. How was he going to do this? And one of the options is for him to file personal bankruptcy. Part of uh, our colleague Caitlin Collins reporting was that that is not something he wants to do. I mean, talk about a personal blow. She said he has privately expressed opposition to any path concerning filing for bankruptcy, and it remains the least likely for now. Well, he's filed for bankruptcy before. He's been bankrupt in the 90s, if you'll recall. And uh, that wasn't a great time for him. And I think he I think he doesn't want it to happen again, because don't forget, he ran on the fact and we've run clips that I'm very rich. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of money. He testified in a deposition. He had about four hundred million dollars in cash on hand, which we haven't seen. And so I think there's you know, there's a real reluctance here because his whole aura mm -hmm. is I'm this rich guy. And when he was declared bankruptcy the first time, you know, he was monitored by banks, he had things taken away. I mean, I recall in doing some reporting on this that they asked, you know, how much did Marla's engagement ring cost? So I don't think he wants to go through that again. Yeah, and that's very, very true. And that was all before right. he was a candidate. Yeah. Or a former president wanting to be president again. To exactly. Be 